Hey gang, it's Squill, and one of the most common tropes in modern media is the villain redemption arc. Seeing an antagonistic character change and become a better person throughout the course of the show can often be one of the most satisfying aspects of a story. These characters are almost universally loved by audiences, however, that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Instead, we're going to be talking about last minute redemptions. These are characters that act as villains for most of a series run, but get redeemed either during or very close to the finale. These are different from a redemption arc in which a character progressively gets better throughout the course of a series, because a last minute redemption typically just happens in one episode, usually the finale or at least one of the last episodes. Compared to antagonists with series-long arcs in which they're redeemed, the last-minute redemption is a lot more contentious, as to many, they can come off as rushed or unsatisfying. Contrary to this belief, however, I actually think that, under the right circumstances, a last-minute redemption can be excellently done. So to show how a last-minute redemption should be done versus how it shouldn't be done, let's compare King Andreas from Amphibia to White Diamond from Steven Universe. But before we start, I just want to let everyone know that this isn't a Steven Universe hate video. I actually really love Steven Universe and consider it one of my favorite shows. I hope to make more positive videos related to it in the future. Anyways, this video is going to be separated into three parts. First, we discuss how these characters were handled pre-redemption, then we talk about the redemptions themselves, then we discuss how the characters were handled post-redemption. So let's get started. So the thing about White Diamond is that we actually barely see her before the season 5 finale change your mind. There's an unspoken rule with Steven Universe that the audience can only see things through Steven's limited perspective. Even when we do get flashback episodes, they usually involve a character telling the story to Steven. So because we're only allowed to see characters when they interact with Steven, a lot of their actual development ends up happening off-screen. And White Diamond is easily one of the biggest examples of this, since all we really know about her before the original series finale is that she's an authoritarian dictator of the Gem Empire, and that she wants everything and everyone to be perfect. Sure, the characters will sometimes talk about her, but we never get a solid understanding of how or why she came to be who she is. This makes it difficult to sympathize with her and want her to get better. Aside from one very short scene she gets with Steven in one of the last few episodes, the show basically has less than 20 minutes to introduce and then redeem White Diamond. But we'll get to that more later. Compared to Steven Universe and White Diamond, Amphibia spends a lot of time getting us to understand King Andreas. In this one episode, we learn that Andreas' father brainwashed him into working with the Corps, and basically forced him to abandon the people he once cared about. In this one episode alone, we get a better understanding of who Andreas is than we do for White Diamond throughout the entirety of Steven Universe. And obviously, the fact that we know this doesn't make King Andreas a good person, but it does make him far more sympathetic than White Diamond. He is, in a way, a victim of his father's indoctrination. In addition to this, we do also get to see a little bit of his friendship with Marcy before his betrayal at the end of Season 2. This can just be seen as Andreas pulling a front, but it's revealed in the penultimate episode that Andreas actually was genuinely endeared by Marcy from the start, and that he never actually wanted to assimilate Marcy into the core, it was just something his father pushed onto him. Just like with Leaf and Beryl, another friendship is ruined by his father's manipulation. So when we see Andreas act like a goofball in Season 2, that isn't him putting on a mask, that's who he could be with without his father's control. He is a tragic and nuanced character going into the finale, and not just the big bad that the characters have to defeat. Now that we've gone over both characters' pre-redemption, it's time we discuss the redemptions themselves. I actually really like the idea behind White Diamond's redemption. Removing Steven's gem and realizing that he and Rose are not the same person really works conceptually. But the problem is, the way it's executed just feels too easy. 
After this point, all Steven really needs to do is say, hey, people having flaws is good, and boom, White is completely okay with undoing all the terrible things she did. I don't know, for a character who seems so set firm in her beliefs, it feels like it should take more than five minutes to convince her she's wrong. It's jarring seeing a character go from being a ruthless dictator to someone who's scared and confused so quickly. Unlike with Andreas, she was never established as someone with sympathetic qualities. But speaking of Andreas, on paper... <laughs> paper. His redemption should also be too easy. I mean, all that happens is Sprig reading off a letter from Leaf, right? Well, yes, but actually no. Because again, conquering Earth was never something Andreas wanted to do to begin with. It was something that his father convinced him he wanted in order to seem worthy of his love. So when Andreas hears this letter from Leaf telling him that she still loves him despite everything that happened between them, he realizes that he is a person capable of being loved and loving others, and that he doesn't need to please his father in order to be a person of value. And the show doesn't let him off the hook either, and still beats the ever-loving shit out of him. But instead of throwing a temper tantrum like White Diamond, he just accepts his defeat with dignity. It's a really powerful moment. Andreas is a much more nuanced and well-crafted character than White Diamond, which makes his redemption far more believable. So with that said, how are these characters handled post-redemption? Well, I'm gonna be honest, I absolutely hate the way Steven Universe handled the Diamonds after their redemption. Like, I love the Steven Universe movie, it's one of my favorite things to come out of the franchise, but I hate the way the diamonds are treated in it. They're basically just treated like your run-of-the-mill racist grandma. And the way they just obsess over Steven honestly makes it really hard for me to take them seriously in the original show at all. And they're not punished at all, they're still rulers over Homeworld, they just have to be nice now. They even get to adopt Spinel, what the hell? Spinel is way too good for them. I will give Future some credit in that it does show that Steven still holds a lot of resentment towards the diamonds, particularly White. But I absolutely hate the reveal that Yellow can just heal Shattered Gems. It's just such a cheap way to undo all of the damage these characters have done. And they're still portrayed as super emotional and clingy. The Diamonds became a joke in Steven Universe. I can't really see them as good people even after their redemption, but it's also hard to take them seriously as villains anymore because of how pathetic the movie and future made them. And White in particular really got off scot-free with no comeuppance for her actions. In comparison, Kane Andreas' redemption is handled with a ton more grace. First off, he actually does something good that doesn't magically undo all the bad things he's done. There's even this cool moment where Grime thinks that Andreas is slipping back into his old ways, only to realize that actually the exact opposite was happening. And that's another thing, the characters in the show don't just treat him like he's all of a sudden a good guy now. It's sort of under-talked about compared to the other goodbye scenes in the episode, but I absolutely love Marcy's goodbye to King Andreas. Unlike the other goodbyes in the episode, which are super emotional and heartfelt, Marcy's goodbye to Kane Andreas is sorta awkward. He put her through a lot of pain, but at the same time she understands that he is still a person who is suffering, and that she does have good memories with him. She treats him kindly, but she also doesn't get too overly emotional because of just how complicated their relationship is. And Andreas just gives her a quiet little take care, showing that he genuinely regrets everything he put her through and probably doesn't think he's even deserving of this much of a goodbye. It's just such a nice little melancholic scene that's always stood out to me. And when we see him in the time skip, he seems to be properly punished. He's dethroned, chained up, and missing an arm. The character is redeemed while still being punished and treated with the respect he deserved. A far cry from how the diamonds were handled in Steven Universe. And that's how Amphibia handled a last minute redemption better than Steven Universe. Please let me know what your thoughts on these redemptions are, as well as what your favorite redemption arc in media is in the comments. Squill, out.